Before diving into a multiple component distillation column, it pays to take a step back and analyze a multiple component separation that is occurring at a single equilibrium stage. And this is also referred to as a partial condenser in practice. So if you ever come across uh, a unit at a chemical plant, it is common, you'll find these partial condensers and they are oftentimes the first separator uh, in a multiple unit separation uh, and it helps separate out the lighter components, the components that will accumulate into the vapor phase from the heavier components that will condense most often into a liquid phase. And so what I'm gonna do in this video is cover how a chemical engineer would model what's going on at a single equilibrium stage and how we can begin to get equations that will help us evaluate unknowns and optimize our process. So if we wanna know what temperature and pressure we should be operating at, how are we gonna do that? How are we gonna make the equations to write the MATLAB code that'll get us plots of how these component molar ratios are functions of temperature and pressures. So it is pretty exciting stuff if you are into this. And so to begin with, Let's, I've drawn a diagram of what a partial condenser unit will look like here to the left. We'll have some feed with a flow rate F, and this will be units of moles per second. And Z sub I denotes a component's molar ratio within the feed stream. And our feed will also have some temperature and pressure. I've denoted T feed and P feed. And once we enter into our partial condenser unit, our single equilibrium stage, there will be a vapor phase and a liquid phase. And I'm going to make an assumption that these vapor and liquid phases are well mixed. And in practice, if you do a chemical operations lab, you will find that this is not the best assumption we can be making because at the interface, we'll find concentration gradients and the bulk fluid either the bulk liquid or the bulk vapor phase will have concentrations that are sometimes different. Quite often they'll be a little bit different from what that interfacial uh, concentration is and therefore there will be a difference driving force than what we think actually exists. But for the sake of an introduction to multiple component distillations and equilibrium stages, we're going to make the assumption that we are well mixed and consequently what that means is the concentration of our components, the molar ratios of our components in the vapor and liquid phase is homogeneous throughout. And so inside of our unit, we will pick a temperature and pressure to operate at, which is a big reason why we even care about writing all these equations and performing all these computer simulations. And exiting our reactor at the top will be our lighter components and they'll be leaving in our vapor phase with a flow rate of v moles per second as well as a molar ratio of y sub i corresponding to each component we will be adding heat or taking heat out or maybe not adding any heat at all but we may have q dot joules of energy being added per unit time and so uh, that's why I've written this variable Q here, and this will appear in our enthalpy balance later on. And then exiting our equilibrium stage, we will have L moles per second, as well as X sub I, which is a molar ratio. And so the first question to ask is, how do we start figuring out how many equations do you even need to fully define our system? And so, depending on the number of components we have, I'll let this be equal to k, k is an integer value, so just five, we will need, so the number of unknowns that will exist will be equal to 2k plus four. And so if k was five, that means there are 14 equations we're going to need to have to evaluate all 14 unknowns. And so the first equation that we're going to be able to create is a mole balance or a component mole balance on each species inside of our reactor. And so what this tells us here, just to spell this out, is we need 2K plus four equations. 
And so equation one that we can derive is a component mole balance. And this tells us that because there's no, we're going to assume there's no reactions occurring, so the mole uh, of each species will be conserved in our reactor, or not a reactor, but a uh, partial condenser, is equivalent to y sub i times v plus x sub i times l, as well as the total number of moles entering must be equivalent to the total number of moles exiting, so f is equal to v plus l. This is the first set of equations that we can derive from our balance equations to fully define our system. The next set of equations we're going to get come from the fact that molar ratios must sum to unity, so the sum of the molar ratios in your vapor phase must sum to unity, and the same can be said of the sum of the molar ratios in your liquid phase, x sub i must also sum to, sum to unity, which is one. Next, we're going to be turning to an enthalpy balance And in our enthalpy balance, what we will find is that the specific enthalpy of our feed times F dot, and I want to spell this out, F dot has units of kilograms per second because this is specific enthalpy, H sub feed, and I'll comment more on this later. This is equivalent to the specific enthalpy of your vapor times the mass flow rate of your vapor phase plus specific enthalpy of your liquid phase times mass flow rate of your liquid phase, and then plus Q dot. So if we're adding in moles of energy to our system, Q dot will have a positive value. If it's a refrigeration unit and we're taking moles out, Q will have a negative value in our enthalpy balance. Next up, we'll be able to turn to our equilibrium relationship. We're going to be assuming that our partial condenser reaches equilibrium. And therefore, the concentration or the molar ratio of some component I in the vapor phase inside of our partial condenser must be related by some proportionality constant K sub I to that same component's molar ratio within the liquid phase in our partial condenser. And Again, if we're dealing with K components here, we're going to have K equations because it'll be like a number of equations will be summed from I to K of all of these. So um, you can hopefully see how much, how many equations we will get from all of these kind of mile high perspectives. And so next up, uh, the final equation or relation that we're going to be able to assert in our analysis is the fact that we need a pressure difference between our feed and whatever's inside of our partial condenser in order to drive fluid flow you need a pressure difference much like in electricity how you need a voltage potential to have a current and what this tells us is that the pressure of our feed must be greater than the pressure that we operate our tank at so if you have a higher pressure our fluids will flow from areas of high pressure to low pressure, our feed will enter our tank. So this is the final relation that we're able to um, demand in our partial condenser unit. And so uh, with that said, I'd now like to speak a little bit more about these specific enthalpy values that we saw here with this uh, term here. So H feed, is called specific, and specific is another way of saying per mass, specific enthalpy of the feed. And H sub feed, and the same can be said of all the other specific enthalpies, like the enthalpy of the, the specific enthalpy of the vapor phase, is a function of temperature pressure and whatever other, whatever other components are present. And this is because as you learn in a thermodynamics course, depending on whether species are present in a mixture or solution, 
they can take on partial molar properties and new or slightly varied thermodynamic characteristics. So enthalpy, the specific enthalpy of your feed can be very tricky to calculate. Uh, so it will get a little bit more complicated. And it's another reason why doing these calculations by hand gets so tricky, but it, it can be done through tools like Aspen and or Comsol. And another thing we can comment on here is this equilibrium relation that we see here with K sub I. K sub I, much like the specific enthalpy, is also a function of temperature, pressure, and what other components are also present in that solution. And so these are all handled by several equations. And if you take Aspen, for instance, they have a database where they obtain thermodynamic properties from NIST. And with those thermodynamic properties, they're able to define what K sub I and all these specific enthalpies should be and get very accurate results. Uh, and so this gives us an introduction into how we can begin to model multiple component separations in partial condensers and how we derive equations and how many equations we need to know to fully define our system. Uh, I hope you guys find this useful and let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.